أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Today I'm going to be uh, advancing the continuation of uh, whether Christ was crucified indeed or not I'm going to be using the Bible and the Quran and common sense and logic and empirical evidence gathered by men who specialize on the way of crucifixion. You know, the mode of crucifixion uh, was created by the Romans long time before Christ was even born. Uh, they used that angle of, uh, you know, uh, punishing people uh, who commit crime, thieves, rapists, murderers, and stuff like that. And so anyone who died on the cross is considered to be a very enemy of the state, enemy of the community, enemy of everything. And so a little wonder we see in the book of uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23 all the way down, God Almighty said anyone who died also on the cross is a curse of God. So clearly Christ will not be the curse from God. So to advance my argument on part 3, I'm sorry, part four of this uh, uh, situation. I'm going to be looking at a different angle, uh, which is uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. This is about a case of Jonah. Uh, there was a time that uh, the Jewish Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, they sent you know, people to come and ask Jesus Christ if he is indeed uh, the Messiah. Uh, they came to him before they would agree with his bona fide being the Messiah. They want to know if he would do a miracle. So they ask him to perform a miracle, to show them, give them a sign, give them a sign to see whether he's the prophet of God or not. So Christ was a little bit angry. He said, an evil and adulterous generation looking for, looking for a sign from me. There shall not be a sign given unto it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then he continued, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall I, the Son of Man, also be three days and three nights in the belly of the, you know, earth. So clearly, he put all his egg in one basket. That means whatever happened to Jonah is going to happen to him. And we know the story of Jonah. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be going back to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah is in the Old Testament. It is only four chapters. It's very short. One of the shortest uh, books in the Bible. And in that uh, book of Jonah, God Almighty asked Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach unto them. To turn around and do that which is good. To put on sackcloth and lower themselves and humble themselves before God Almighty. Otherwise, they will be destroyed. Noah, instead of going to um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nineveh, he took a boat in Tashit and he was going to uh, Joppa. He took a boat and he was running away from where God asked him to go and preach the people. Inside the boat, the boat started not abiding. It is sort of like moving and from, from side to side and side to side. And uh, there was a havoc in that boat. And so the people who are in the boat, the mariners, they begin to form in their mind that whosoever is causing this, you know, a, a turmoil at sea might have run away from his master. That's what they reason. So they say to find, you know, the culprit who is causing uh, the boat to be rocking and rolling in the ocean, we have to make, uh, you know, cast a lot. To cast a lot is like a, you know, head or tail back in the days. What they do is they have, you know, an arrow written by people's name. Those who are going to participate, they write your name and they cast it. If your name comes around, that means you are the one that caused the problem. So when they did it, it didn't catch nobody. They did it again. It didn't catch nobody. And so one of the mariners said, look, I've seen a man you know, with a beard and he looking so godly down there, he's sleeping. Maybe we should go and wake him up and curse the Lord with his name. So they went downstairs and no, uh, Jonah was asleep. So they wake him up and they said, look, we have a very big situation at sea. And we are casting the Lord and see who is responsible for all these things. So Noah, Jonah said, okay, fine, let's, let's, let's just do it. So they went upstairs and they put his name on the arrow and they cast it. As soon as they cast it, it fell on his name. To show that he is the one responsible for causing the tumult at sea. So they did it again. It fell on Jonah. They did it again. It fell on him. So Jonah, he realized that God Almighty is after him. Because God asked him to go to you know, Nineveh. He took a boat and, and he's running away from the commandment of God Almighty. 
So now they want uh, the only way they could save themselves according to the belief of that people at that time, the superstition of that time, is to throw the person at sea. They, they have to push him in the water. Now Jonah he realized that God Almighty is after him. So he said unto them, You don't have to push me, just I'm coming. You know, he was willingly giving himself to be pushed in the ocean. They were shocked. Wouldn't you like resist? You know, people resist if they're gonna go to the gallows. But he's saying, Okay, push me, push me. So you know, in a situation like this, they push him in the ocean. And God Almighty had prepared a whale waiting to swallow Jonah. So as soon as they push in, he fell in the mouth of uh, the whale and the whale swallowed Jonah. Jonah is supposed to die. The teeth inside the belly of, you know, uh, uh, the whale, the heat and suffocation, definitely he has to die. For three days and three nights, the ship is taking him around the ocean. Jonah did not die. The third day, the whale came and vomited him at the shore. Alive. He did not die. Alive. The Bible said he was alive because he prayed in the belly of the whale for God Almighty to let him off. He said, oh my God, I have, I've, 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 I've indeed committed wrong on myself. You know, if you did not pardon me and let me out, I'm going to be among the losers. So God Almighty listened to the prayer of Jonah and he let him off. So he was vomited by the fish at the shore. So the Christian said, we asked the Christian, how was Jonah in the belly of the whale? They said, alive. For three days, they say he's alive. Of course, because dead men do not pray in the belly of the fish. Jonah prayed to God Almighty. Do dead people pray? No. That means he was alive. For three days, he was alive. At the third day, they came, the, you know, the fish came and vomited him outside. That means Jonah was alive. We asked the Jew. The Jew said Jonah was alive. We asked the Hindu. Jonah was alive. We asked the Muslims. Jonah was alive. Listen to what Jesus said. I'm going to repeat again. Matthew 12, 39. Jesus said, the only way to prove to you that I am the Messiah is what is gonna happen? What uh, is what happened to Jonah is gonna happen to me? As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale in the ocean, so shall I, the Son of Man, also be in the belly of the earth. So now we ask the Christian, how was Jonah? Jonah was alive. We ask the Jew, Jonah was alive. The Muslim, Jonah was alive. So we ask them again, how was Jesus in the belly of the earth for three days? They say he is dead. Okay, now between Jesus Christ and the Christians, somebody is lying. Somebody is lying because Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall I also be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. So we ask Jonah, he's alive. The Jews say he's alive. But the Christians said Jonah was alive, but Jesus Christ was actually dead for three days in the tomb. One of them was lying. Who is lying among Jesus Christ? Is it Jesus Christ or the Christian? I believe Christ do not lie. So it's got to be the Christian. They have missed the boat entirely. Now when they realized that there's a difficulty in the situation, they said, okay, he was buried on Friday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's impossible to, be, to get three days when you are buried in the earth for three days. Because Saturday no, evening, he was buried, supposed to have been buried. Saturday night, one day. Sunday morning, early in the morning, you know, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and eventually this is what happened. She saw that the tomb was empty. So he stayed in the, you know, uh, 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 in the tomb for two nights and a day. Some even say one night and a day. All of a sudden, the Christian found himself in a difficulty. He said, okay, now we're going to have to revise it. Now they're talking about Ash Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you see three days. No, meanwhile, the Bible is clear that he was buried, supposed to have been buried in the earth for three, I mean, on Friday. So it's on Friday, Friday, Saturday, one day. Saturday, Sunday early in the morning. It's like one night and half of a day. Not even three days, but three days and three nights, Jesus Christ have failed, according to the Christian. But I believe Jesus Christ did not fail. It is the Christian themselves who misunderstood Jesus entirely on the situation of crucifixion. The Quran also said, Wama kataluhu, wama salabuhu. They did not kill him and they did not crucify him. Well, I think it should be halahum. It just happened. It, 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 it happens that that's what happened. Those who are involved in this case are full of doubt. They don't have the exact knowledge. He did not die for surety. God took him to the heaven. 
And that is exactly what happened. So the Christian have found himself in a dilemma. No matter how you look at the case of crucifixion, Christ did not die. Clearly he did not die. And internal evidence also proved that Christ did not die. This is the situation that we have to come out and make uh, a video to let everybody understand that the case of Jesus Christ, just like the Quran said, he did not die. Khazar billahi tawfiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.